Hey, are we all set for the move? Yeah, I've sent all your stuff to your parents' house. What? Danny looked shocked at what I just said. Little did he know, a grim fate awaited him. My name is Natasha, a 30-year-old working professional. Danny and I just got married. We were actually classmates in high school. Back then, we were just friends and not romantically involved. After high school, we lost touch, only to reunite a decade later. Our reunion happened at a classmate's wedding. It felt like an informal alumni get-together, and we exchanged numbers after a few drinks at the after-party. We hit it off instantly, and there was something comforting about being together. From then on, we'd grab drinks after work or spend our days off in cafes, and eventually, we started dating. After dating for two years, we decided to tie the knot. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I'd marry him. Life is full of surprises, but of course, I was thrilled to be marrying him and couldn't imagine tying the knot with anyone else. I was head over heels for him. We had family meetings with both sets of parents, met everyone, and had a beautiful wedding ceremony. At the wedding, a video played recounting how we met at a classmate's wedding, and the room burst into applause. So many people came to celebrate our marriage, and we were truly happy. After the honeymoon, our newlywed life began. I was still working after we got married, so we had a dual income, which allowed us some luxuries. We could afford to dine at fancy restaurants and even take vacations on long weekends. Life was blissful, and I felt happy every single day. But that happiness didn't last. The reason? The parents-in-law. Initially, Danny and I lived together in my apartment. About six months into our marriage, we decided it was time to buy a house. How about this place? Danny suggested, holding up a brochure for a high-rise condo. Wow, are we really going for such a high-end place? I asked. Well, we're going to live here for a long time, right? I think it's okay to splurge on something really good, Danny replied. He had a point. A comfortable home environment would likely benefit our mental and physical well-being. It could even boost our work productivity and subsequently our earnings. So, I agreed to Danny's proposal, and we decided to buy a luxury high-rise condo. Together, we toured various properties. The high-rise condos we looked at really lived up to the hype. Each place was spacious with great views from the windows, and the kitchens looked user-friendly with their modern layouts. I can't decide. They're all so good, I said. I know, right? Danny agreed. We had a blast exploring various properties. After several discussions, we settled on which place to buy. It was definitely a big-ticket purchase, but living there proved it was worth every penny. The place was incredibly comfy, spacious, clean, and new, which put us in a happy mood every day. Looking out from the room at night offered an amazing cityscape, and on clear, breezy days, we'd step out onto the expansive balcony to sip some coffee. Danny seemed really comfortable, too, and life in our new home was joyful for both of us. But then, a little while later, we hit a snag. The issue started when Danny invited his parents-in-law over. I didn't mind. I invited my own parents and had hoped that my parents-in-law would come by at least once. However, they took quite a liking to our place and started showing up repeatedly. The doorbell would ring on weekends, and when we checked the monitor, there they were, Danny's parents. Did you invite Alyssa and Ivan again? I asked. Nope, but let's let them in if they came to visit, Danny answered the intercom. Just showing up unannounced is pretty rude if you ask me. Despite that, Danny didn't seem to mind and let them in anyway. Wow, this place looks fabulous every time we visit, and this view is just spectacular, my parents-in-law exclaimed as they entered. Without a second thought, they sat down on the sofa where Danny and I had just been sitting, acting like they owned the place. Then I'm parched, my father-in-law said. Yeah, how about some cold drinks and snacks, my mother-in-law added. My parents-in-law began ordering me around. Why should I have to do this on my day off, I thought. Natasha, could you get that ready? Danny asked as if it was the most natural thing. I felt like saying, why didn't you do it yourself? but didn't want to create tension. So, with a desire for them to leave soon, I served my parents-in-law some drinks and snacks. They ate as if it was the most natural thing and continued to lounge around. As it got to the evening, they started to say they were hungry. Should we order delivery? Danny asked. Then, with that, 
Danny began ordering steak for delivery. Natasha, could you go grab some drinks? Danny asked me. Now? I'm here with mom and dad, I replied. You want me to go? No, I'll go get them. Danny said. I was ticked off that Danny just made decisions like that, and I was also annoyed that his parents had no reservations about making themselves at home. However, the thought of being left alone with them while Danny went shopping was even worse. So begrudgingly, I went to the supermarket to buy some liquor. When I got back, Danny and his parents were chatting in the living room, looking like they were having a great time. It would be a heartwarming sight if it weren't so frequent, but seeing them laughing just irritated me. When this happens multiple times a month, to make matters worse, his parents stay late into the night, and because Danny orders expensive steaks for delivery, the costs really add up. What's more, he expects me to cover it, I thought. We have to keep our budget balanced, don't we? I asked Danny. Why not just order something cheaper? I can't do that, Danny replied. It would disappoint mom and dad. Plus, people would think we're broke. We have to be mindful of how we're perceived. What Danny's getting at is that living in a high-rise condo apparently means we have to keep up appearances and look wealthy to others. So, ordering cheaper items off the menu would supposedly lower people's opinions of us. I honestly think no one cares about that sort of thing. Ever since Danny moved into the high-rise, he's developed this weird sense of pride. And his parents continued to come over to our place as if it's their second home. While they used to visit only on weekends lately, they've started showing up even on weekdays after work. They're coming around two or three times a week now. It's almost like they're living here. Lately, they've even started asking Danny for a spare key so we don't have to coordinate all the time. Danny seems to agree, but I've been putting my foot down. And because of that, there's been a strained atmosphere between us. Why can't we... I gave my parents a key. They're my family. Even if they are family, it's not normal to give parents a key to their child's marital home. Why not? Mom and dad find it inconvenient. Would you be okay giving my parents a key then? Well, that's different. See, you can't say yes. What you're suggesting isn't normal, and you know it. Stop nagging me. You're making things complicated. Complicated? How? I'm just trying to make things easier for mom and dad. Stop arguing against it. Don't you use that tone with me and don't you get in my way. I'm just trying to be a dutiful son. After that hated exchange, we stopped talking to each other for a while. I didn't say anything wrong. I think Danny, who's put himself on a pedestal, is the one in the wrong. Yet Danny doesn't apologize and even invites his parents over as if nothing's wrong. I've grown tired of dealing with his parents. So now I go out whenever Danny brings them over. Danny even complained about that. Hey, it's rude to go out when my parents are here. Why do I need to be here? You three are just chatting and relaxing. Well, they're guests in our home. You should be serving them drinks and snacks. They're here all the time. Why do I need to play host? What do you take me for, a housekeeper? No, that's not it. My parents expect you to do this because you're my wife. Don't use your parents as an excuse. I work too, you know. We should share household duties. You don't even cook, so I do it every day. You were supposed to do the laundry and cleaning, but somehow I've ended up doing everything. You're taking me for granted. That's not the case, really. You've grown prideful just because we live in a high-rise doesn't mean you are too good for housework, showing off, huh? Danny mumbled, perhaps because I hit a nerve. Our relationship had started to strain, and then Danny did the unthinkable. One day, I came home from work to find his parents there. Natasha, you're finally home. Elisa, what's going on? Danny and I were having an important conversation. We want to include you, but you weren't here. An important conversation? I had to work late. What's this about? We're moving in. Excuse me? We talked it over. You didn't like the idea of giving them a spare key, right? So mom suggested that we could just live together. That solves the problem. I thought it was a good idea, so we decided to move in together. We've got a spare room, too. How can you decide this without me? We've discussed it. It's your fault for not being here. That's right, it's your fault. No, if it's that important, you should have told me in advance. Besides, I don't approve of this arrangement. When I said that, his parents looked displeased. Why should we have to get your approval, especially when you're only living here thanks to Danny? I was baffled by what they were saying. 
See, Natasha always gets carried away. It's hard having her as a wife. Even Danny chimed in. And it clicked. Apparently, Danny had told them he bought the apartment. He bought Why when in reality, it's in my name, and I'm covering 80% of the mortgage. No, actually, Danny's not contributing financially at all. I'm shouldering the entire cost. Danny started getting carried away and said, If you keep defying me, we're getting divorced, you know? Oh, I guess that means she'll be kicked out of the house, huh? If you want to live a comfortable life, you better not defy us. My parents-in-law chimed in, provoking me just like Danny. At that moment, whatever love I had left for Danny vanished. I'm so done with these people. All right, let's get divorced. What? The moment you mentioned divorce, it was over. I can't continue with you. The three of them looked shocked when I said that, but not wanting to be belittled by me, their son's wife, my parents-in-law pushed for the divorce. Leave her, just like she said, yeah, Danny? We don't want to live with her either. Persuaded by his parents, Danny seemed to have made up his mind about the divorce. Fine, start packing and move out. We're done. I'm glad Danny agreed to the divorce. So no distribution of property then? Of course not. I won't give you even a penny. Lucky for me, Danny isn't the sharpest tool in the shed. Can I have two or three days? I need time to prepare for the move. Hurry up. Well, the weekend's coming up. Mom and I could go on a trip. Oh, how nice. Let's go to Hawaii. And so Danny and his parents were all excited, talking about the trip they were planning. For me, the prospect of them being away was a breath of fresh air. They eventually left for their parents-in-law home. I immediately contacted a moving company. After that, I had them pack up and move all of Danny's stuff. A few days later, Danny returned home alone. What? You're still here? Danny looked disappointed to see me. Uh, seeing your face really ruins my good mood after a nice trip. Oh, really? Could you send the divorce papers then? Fine, whatever. Danny looked annoyed as he filled out the divorce papers. Then he handed the paper to me in a rough manner. Hey, are you done with your moving preparation? I still see some of your stuff. Yep, I've shipped all your belongings back to your parents' house. Nothing of yours is left in my room. Danny looked shocked at what I said. What do you mean? Did you really forget? This house is in my name. I make way more money than you do. Have you forgotten what's real while lying to Elisa and everyone else? Uh, Danny finally seemed to realize the situation he was in, and that set him on a path to a miserable end. Hold on. So, Mom and I can't live in this house? No, you can't. This is my house. Plus, my parents are moving in today. What? Right. Then my parents arrived. Ah, they're here. Danny's face turned pale and froze as my parents entered the house. Danny, I heard from our daughter. Seems like you've been treating her pretty badly. Uh, well, you see, don't bother making excuses. I don't want to look at you. Get out of my daughter's house, now. Frightened by the intense anger in Dad's voice, Danny quickly left. I then immediately filed the divorce papers and formally divorced Danny. Though my parents-in-law called and yelled at me, they were speechless when I explained everything. I assumed they also heard the truth from Danny. You're kidding me. So, the penthouse wasn't something Danny bought? Please, Natasha. We've already sold our house. Let us stay in yours. How dare you even ask that? My parents have already moved in, so give it up. I said that and hung up the phone. It seems that the former occupants of the parents-in-law home had to scramble to find a new place. They had wrongly assumed Danny could afford a penthouse and had bought a bunch of luxury brands like bags and watches. Now they're struggling to make those payments and living a very frugal life. On the other hand, I'm doing well at work, producing good results. My mom helps with household chores, which allows me to focus on my job, something I'm incredibly thankful for. I've also been saving money, and I'm living happily in a luxurious penthouse with my family. Though my marriage was a failure, I plan to aim for even greater success in my career. Greater success.